Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the installation of our newest addition of triggers to the SIG line of pistols for the SP2022. This is our Hannibal trigger, which is adjustable for pre-travel and over-travel, so it shortens it quite a bit. All right, so let's go over tools that we're gonna need. You're gonna need your bench block. You need your 050 Allen wrench. Now I've already taken the liberty of uh, applying VC3 before the video uh, on the screws and have been letting them cure. Uh, if you're using our trigger installation kit at home and you're using the VC3, go ahead and apply it and take you about a 15 to 20 minute break and then come on back to the video and go from there. That'll give the VC3 time to cure properly. All right. So you're also going to need a two millimeter or uh, one sixteenth punch. You need a small flathead screwdriver. You need a one eighth inch punch. And you're going to need a set of needle nose pliers. And as usual, if you're not keeping up with the cleanliness of your pistol, go ahead and dig out your uh, cleaning brush, your oil, and your hops number nine. And go ahead and while you got everything apart, strip it down, clean it real nice. All right, so let's go ahead and lock and clear the weapon. As you can see, we are visually and physically empty. So let's go ahead and strip the slide. Take our takedown out. Let the slide go forward and set it off to the side. We're not going to be doing anything with it. Take your slide lock, set it off to the side. All right. We're only going to be removing two pins. You only need to get to the trigger in here. All right. So... Let's take our bench block, flip it over to the flat side, take our 1 8 inch punch, we're going to drive out, oh, you're going to need your hammer too, I guess that helps, forgot to add that to the list, you might want this, your brass and polymer hammer, <laughs> anyhow, uh, we're going to drive out the locking block pin first, now all the pins on the 2022 go from the left side of the frame to the right side of the frame, out. All right, they don't go back in from the left. They only come back in from the right. All right, as you can see on your locking block pin, you have a cutout right here. All right, on the right side of the locking block, you can see the spring that that locks into. So when you go and reinstall everything, you're gonna start from this side and you're gonna go in and it'll lock that into place. All right. Oh, now if you do something stupid like I just did and the spring flies out, just make sure that you put it back in just like that. All right. Okay. So set that off to the side. This spring, what it does too, you'll notice the other hole, and that's for your takedown. So it locks the takedown in place as well. So we're going to set our locking block off to the side. We're going to go back to the bench block. You're going to take your 1 16th or 2 millimeter and you're going to push out. All right, it may take a little bit of a tap, but you're going to push out the trigger pin. Now, have a look down in there. You see your trigger return spring right here? Keep your thumb on it so that when you pull this out when you pull your pin out also notice the piece of rubber that's on the end of that go ahead and leave that on there so you don't lose it and i'll show you why all right so the pin's out slowly let up on the spring if you just pull that pin out this thing will come just flying right out and it's hard to find all right so set that off to the side our pin our uh, trigger already disconnected from the uh, trigger bar so just pull it straight out the top, set it off to the side. All right, now we're gonna talk about our trigger pin real quick. So this is why you don't wanna lose this rubber piece. Usually it's not gonna come out, uh, but if you have to push good and hard to get it out, it may grab a hold of the top where it starts to taper outwards on your punch. But you can see on your trigger pin, you've got an anchor point. And on the back of this anchor point, it's beveled so that it plugs into the rubber and that's what holds it in place during firing, okay? So set those off to the side. Now we're gonna take our trigger 
Now, because everybody's tolerances are slightly different in a mass-produced pistol, the 5 16 uh, set screw goes in the top, but the reason we did a 5 16 and a 3 16 if you find that you need more over-travel adjustment, you can flip the screws. But for now, we're going to go ahead and put our 5 16 pre-travel screw in. I like to start it about that far out. That usually gives you a good starting point and take and take a straight pick or something like that and you can just get your excess VC3 off. If you're using Loctite, blue Loctite, uh, make sure that you wipe off your excess. It's not going to hurt anything to have the excess on there. It just doesn't look very good. Uh, with the VC3, if you have excess blue Loctite, it's going to lock a lot of stuff up. So make sure you get it wiped off. All right, so we're going to put our post travel screw in, which is 3 16 And that's also why it's very important to let this stuff cure properly. See, there's still a lot left on the screw but you saw a whole bunch come out the front the way this stuff works it's very similar to rubber cement and uh, if you don't let it cure all the way all that can get stuck in there and gunk things up this is purely anti-vibration thread mate all right see prevents fastener loosening due to shock and vibration uh, as i've talked about it in previous videos it was originally designed for marine use in boats and things like that. All right, so we're ready to put our trigger pin back through. So as you can see, if you let it sit, it will just come out of the trigger bar. So what I like to do is take my bench block, turn it on its side like this so that it holds the pistol just like so. And then I'll take my trigger pin, I'll go ahead and get it started. And once it starts to protrude a little bit, I'll back it off some, make sure that the trigger is all the way to the side. And we're going to take our needle nose pliers and remember uh, the trigger with the left hook on it or correction right it pushes off to the right is going to go into the back cup of the trigger itself and then up here where we have the uh, small about 30 40 degree bend going up is going to go forward okay take your needle nose pliers grab the spring like so Go ahead and push it on down in there. This is the tricky part because you don't want to mash the spring too much, but you also want to make sure that you get it. Uh, don't do what I just did. And set your arm off to the side and squeeze a little too hard and then the spring comes flying out. All right, back that up a little bit more. Because of the way that this sits, you're gonna to want to install it that way. And you're compressing the spring, but you're also going to push the trigger pivot, trigger pin, I should say, through at the same time. So that's why it gets a little tricky. And like I said, we don't want to over squeeze it. We want to squeeze it enough that it'll line up. And if you have to, once you get it down in there and it's lined up somewhat, you can use your 16 or 1 16th punch to get it lined up. All right, make sure the spring's down out of the way. Once you get it going, give it a tap with your palm or hammer. We're gonna take our rubber grommet and push it onto the other side. Take your 1 16th, just kind of edge around it. It should move just like that, but you should be able to push on it and feel it. Don't push hard. You don't wanna push hard enough that you pop it out like you did when you took it apart. But just give it a little push and you'll hear it click. You'll feel it click. All right. So we've got our over travel uh, a little bit over adjusted. So that's not going to drop, but that's okay. Because now we're ready to go ahead and put the locking block back in. All right. But when I just did, always make sure that everything's going to be moving before you go on to putting the locking block in. All right. So we see. Trigger bar is moving, so that's good. So far, so good. All right, let's go ahead and take our locking block and set it back down inside. All right, we're gonna take our 
locking block pin, put it in, go ahead and drive it home, give it a little push. If it doesn't want to push, just give it a slight tap with your 1 8 and it'll pop right into place. All right. Make sure that you're flush on both sides. All right. And that's it, guys. You've got the trigger installed. So now we're going to put the slide back on and we're going to go ahead and adjust our pre and post travel. So the way I like to do this, because what happens is a lot of people do this and they're like, why won't my gun work? Well, you've got it in front of the barrel lug. So the best thing to do is line up your barrel lug with your takedown, get it started so it holds the barrel in place, rack it back enough to seat the slide home. All right. There we go. All right, so now we are ready to do our adjustments. Now, <clears throat> on the 2022, it's going to be a little different than adjusting other triggers, mostly because this is double action, single action. But the moment you pull the trigger the first time in double action with a live round in it, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically, as it cocks, go into single action. Well, as you can see, where we have it adjusted way out for our double action pull, the moment it goes into single action, it's not going to fall. So the over travel, you're going to want to adjust to the single action. All right. So we're going to turn that counterclockwise, one quarter turn at a time. All right. So there you go. Now you can fine tune this, obviously, by cocking it. And getting it down just right all right now we're going to do the exact opposite and tune it to the double action for the pre-travel reason being that right there when it goes into single action it's going to stage itself further back anyway but if you tune the pre-travel to the single action pull then what ends up happening is when you go to pull it in double action which is how all SIG classic style pistols work, you know, you decock it and then uh, holster it and you're ready to go. And so when you pull, you're in double action. Now you can see, unless we let it slam way forward, you know, hard and give it that extra oomph and double action, it's not going to go. Single action, not a problem. All right. So you're going to want to do the pre-travel to the double action. All right. So you're going to go out counterclockwise until even slamming it forward, letting it spring forward real hard, you don't get any reset, okay? So now we're going to go one quarter turn clockwise at a time until we get normal reset, not slinging the trigger forward reset, normal release reset, all right? And there you go. And it's tuned in now. We're completely tuned in between the over travel once it goes into single action mode after your first round. And we are completely tuned in on our pre travel and double action. All right. So that's it. That's the adjustment settings on the Hannibal trigger. Uh, that's going to reduce about 20 to 25% of the trigger travel overall uh, which a lot of people have been looking for and this is a platform uh, the 2022 is a platform that's really not gotten a lot of attention that it actually deserves because all in all it's a really nice pistol and uh, it's very affordable as far as sig pistols go to get into a sig sawyer pistol because uh, you know if you're gonna go uh with a 226 or 229, especially if they're a Legion model, you're going to pay upwards of $1,300, $1,400. Whereas you can get an SP 2022 for around $500-ish, about the same price as a Glock. So, I mean, it's it's a great pistol, and the Hannibal Trigger makes a huge difference in it. Um, gets rid of the trigger bite, too, uh, that's associated with some of the 2022s. Um, 
and with that with the trigger bite on it the, the biggest reason you run into that is just because this is a mass-produced pistol not all of them have it some of them do uh, but this will get rid of it for all of them all right so there you go guys that's gonna wrap this video up uh, on the Hannibal trigger for the 2022 uh, I'll be doing a video very shortly uh, testing the Hannibal trigger as well as the guide rod uh, that we make for this uh, starting out at stock rate going up to the uh, highest rate we make for it um, and that's going to be it. If you got any questions over everything we just went over, uh, feel free to email me at tech, that's Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Uh, also be sure uh, to swing uh, by our social media feeds and follow us on social media here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, uh, go by the website or the Facebook page and sign up for the monthly newsletter. Uh, I don't post for about two, three days uh, what the monthly sale is going to be after the newsletter comes out. So all of you that subscribe to the newsletter are the first ones clued in to what the monthly uh, sale is going to be. And uh, so you get a head start on everybody else. Um, what else? Ground Pounder. Uh, all we're waiting on on Ground Pounder is the final approval for the checkout system. Uh, Charles is working with that all week and it should be up by uh, this weekend or middle of next week uh, according to the checkout program. So we're real excited about that. Be sure to head over there especially if you own a Razor. Uh, you're gonna want these parts. <laughs> if, you're, if you're serious about off-roading if you're serious about your UTV off-roading and your Razor, you're definitely going to want to get some of the parts we're making because they're very much extreme duty. They're not just heavy duty, they're extreme duty. So be sure to run over there and check that out. And uh, that's going to be it, guys. So to recap, Hannibal Trigger makes a huge difference in uh, the pull and the travel distance on the 2022. Uh, Ground Pounder is going to be launching any day now, and uh, if you got any questions, feel free to email me, follow us on social media, and that's going to be it, guys. So as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.